Hello everyone, welcome to this Nick from Top Notch Sports. And today we got a lot to discuss. Let's hop right into this thing. Why Eddie? Why Eddie, set? <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome. This is Nick from Top Match Sports. Today we're going to go over the 2023 Dallas Cowboys salary review and offseason moves for 2023. In 2022, head coach Mike McCarthy and quarterback Dak Prescott finished with a record of 12 and 5, finishing second in the NFC East, winning a game in the playoffs, but then ultimately losing to the San Francisco 49ers, which ended their run. There are a lot of questions now that are going to be asked, right? And we just saw the latest move was them not holding on to offensive coordinator Kellen Moore. And now we're hearing a lot about Mike McCarthy might start opening up the playbook under what he used to do in Green Bay. So now here we go. We're in a whole new predicament. What's going to happen? Somebody needs to be held responsible, whether it's the ownership, the coaching staff, or the players. And if it is the players, right, we're going to say the players are not living up to expectation. Well, then you got to start questioning the GM, the ownership. Why are they not? Why are they paying these players top tier money if they're not top tier? Right? Why is Dak Prescott making top tier money if he's not top tier? Why is Zeke making top tier money if he's not top tier? And we can go right down the dang list. I mean, this team, either. I, I, let me put it this way real fast. And I'll talk about this at the end of the video because I want to get into this real fast. But before we do that, I just want to say this. A lot of these guys on this team are considered superstars. When you hear Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, right away everyone says, oh, yeah, top five, top ten, you know, right down the list, right? And th this has been, been the thing now for the last five, six years. Now maybe some people are starting to question it. But for years, man, everyone, Dak's a top five, top seven, you know, quarterback in the NFL. Yeah, Zeke's a top five running back in the NFL, et cetera, et cetera. And then they get paid like it, and then they're not living up to that expectation. And at the end of the day, this team has been talented enough. If these guys are truly superstars, like they everyone says they were, and they had Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup and Dak and Zeke, somebody should be winning football games. This team should be making the playoffs and making a push every single year. So if it's not them and they are playing good, then who are you going to blame? The coaching staff. And if the coaching staff isn't getting blamed and you don't think it's the coaching staff that's not doing a bad job, well, then you got to blame ownership for paying these guys top-tier money and them not getting there. So someone needs to have, you know, somebody needs to be held accountable. Okay, enough with this nonsense, enough of this opening monologue. I'll talk more about that throughout this video. But right now, let's hop right into this thing. I want to ask you, Cowboys fans, though, what do you think the issue is? But let's hop into this. This is a mock draft season, mock free agency, mock draft for the Dallas Cowboys in 2023. Here we go. On the top left corner of the screen, you see that they got $6.6 million, $6 million in cap space this offseason. Uh, these are the guys that are currently under contract. So if you don't see somebody, that means they're either, you know, they either need a contract extension or they're going to be a pending free agent, depending on whether or not they bring them back. Uh, the guys in green, if you cut them, you save money. Guys in red, you cut them, you lose money. Real quick example, if you cut Doris Armstrong, you save $4 million. If you cut Tyler Smith, you lose $7.9 million. What does that mean? You're not going to cut the guys in red, but you may cut some of the guys in green if you think it's worth it. You know, Jordan Lewis, $5 million. Whether or not you think he's worth it, yes or no, you know, let me know in the comment section below. Doran Armstrong, $4 million. Jaron Curse, $4.4 million. But again, even if you cut one, two, and three players, what are you saving? $12, $13 million, and be up to $18 million. You may be able to sign one to two players if you're lucky, and, and are you really filling them in? So you got a lot of things to question here. Let me know what you guys think. But again, you guys don't have a lot of cap space to be working with here. And, you know, you got the same regime. The only thing that's changing is Kellen Moore will not be your offense coordinator next year. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. Who do they end up cutting? I'll let you know my prediction in a few slides from now. But right now, we're going to look at the notable losses of the guys that are currently not under contract and need a contract extension. Here are your notable losses. First things first, we're going to look at percent of snaps played. This number is calculated by the percent of snaps they played when they were active for the game they roster. The player was on the IR for 16 games this year and only played one game and played 100% of the snaps. Unfortunately, the number would say 100% of the snaps were played. I know that sounds disgusting, uh, but this is the way they calculate it. So who do we got first? Tight end Dalton Schultz, expected conscious a four-year, $60.5 million deal. 
He played 79% of the snaps. Next guy, defensive end Dante Fowler Jr. He's been a contract a two-year, $14 million deal. He played 32% of the snaps. Kicker, Brett Mayer. Uh, I expect he comes as a three-year, $11 million deal, and he played 100% of the snaps. Linebacker Leighton Van Der Esch, I expect he comes as a two-year, $11.6 million deal. He played 53% of the snaps. And last but not least, running back Tony Pollard, I expect he comes as a three-year, $25.4 million deal. He played 35% of the snaps. Now, again, we made this video a few weeks ago. You know, we did not know necessarily what was going to happen with the playoff run. Tony Pollard going now with an injury really does not, you know, help his situation with getting a decent contract. Uh, but you look at this team here, there's a few guys that you want to definitely mention, and let me know who you think they are in the comment section below. But again, you guys don't have a lot of cap space, so in order to bring some of these guys back, you're going to have to franchise tag one of them. A good rule of thumb here is, is this. If a player played a high percentage of snaps, and they played well during those percent of snaps, and the regime stays the same, which it has, typically the team will bring it back if the cap situation is good. Unfortunately for the Cowboys, the cap situation is not good. So now let's go to the next slide. We're going to look at our potential targets. Here are our potential targets. So here you go. You see here they got $6.6 million in estimated cap space available. We got them making two cuts. We got them cutting Matt Farniak for $2.5 million and Jordan Lewis for $5 million. That saves them about, you know, $7.5 million, which puts them up to $13.1 million in estimated cap space available. With all that being mentioned, estimated signings, we're going to have them sign back Tony Pollard to a three-year $25.2 million deal, which is $8.4 million cap hit. And then we're going to, on top of that, since we're still in the positives after that contract, right, 8.4 minus 13.1 is what? About $4.7 million still positive. You're allowed to franchise tag a player. We're going to franchise tag Dalton Schultz to a one-year $11.3 million deal, which is $11.3 million cap hit, which now you're allowed to go into the negatives, which we would be. Negative $6.6 million. Again, in order for this to happen, you must re-sign Tony Pollard first before you do the franchise tag. If you franchise tag Dalton Schultz first, you will not be able to re-sign Tony Pollard. So it's really, really, we got to keep our ears out and see if they re-sign Tony Pollard first. If they don't re-sign Tony Pollard first, well, then you got a lot of money to work with, okay? And then maybe you can go out there and just sign Dalton Schultz maybe to a normal contract. So this is what we got them doing to retain both guys. We feel like it's inevitable. You have to franchise tag a player. With all that being mentioned, we're going to look at our team needs. You guys need a running back, tight end, offensive guard, defense tackle, and cornerback. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to re-sign Tony Pollard to fill in that running back need, and we're going to franchise tag Dalton Schultz to fill in that tight end need. So now we still need offensive guard, defensive tackle, and cornerback. Well, in the first three rounds, we're going to attack the draft. In the first round, we're going to draft cornerback Emmanuel Forbes. In the second round, we're going to draft offensive guard Andrew Voorhees. And in the third round, we're going to draft defensive tackle Byron Young from Alabama. Now what are we going to do? Well, we're going to plug in the offensive guard. We're going to draft Andrew Voorhees. At defensive tackle, we're going to draft Byron Young from Alabama. And at the cornerback position, we're going to draft Emmanuel Forbes. Now we fill in all our needs. So within the first three rounds, by re-signing and franchising tag players, we got this team in a pretty good situation. So now let's look at our 2024, sorry, 2023 expected lineup. Here is our 2023 expected lineup. Now, the Dallas Cowboys will have negative $6.6 million in cash space, but that's okay. We look at this team here, you see blue and you see orange. Nick, what do those mean? Well, you don't see no yellow. That's a good sign. Yellow means a placeholder, okay? We don't have a placeholder for you guys here. What does that mean? Well, that means that, you know, placeholders for us, okay, are guys that we either don't think are that good or, or that uh, PFF does not rank that highly, okay? None of that exists here. So what do we got then? We got orange and blue. No green. Green means we signed a player out of free agency. We didn't sign a player out of free agency. So what did we do? We franchised Dalton Schultz at the tight end position. And we also re-signed Tony Pollard at the running back position. And the guys in blue, those are your draft picks. We drafted Emmanuel Forbes in the first round. We drafted Andrew Voorhees in the second round. And we drafted Byron Young in the third round. With this team and roster, I feel like this team could take strides forward as you're really not losing a ton, a ton of pieces. You definitely probably still should fill in a linebacker position, right, for sure. Maybe you go out and you attack a few other positions to fill depth pieces. But for the most part, this roster is not truly depleted. There's not many holes. Uh, you got a young linebacker in Jabil Cox. You got a young linebacker in Damon Clark. You got a young linebacker slash edge rusher in Micah Parsons. Okay, so you got a really young team. So what is my prediction for the 2023 season? Well, the Dallas Cowboys in 2022 finished with a record of 12-5 and under head coach Mike McCarthy and quarterback Dak Prescott. After getting rid of offensive quarterback Kellen Moore, who I truly did not love, to be honest with you, 
and hopefully go in the Mike McCarthy system. It's going to be a little bit of a uh, learning year for this Dallas Cowboys team, but they can't learn much because Mike McCarthy really, really needs to keep this team going in the right direction. If they fall apart, if this team doesn't make the playoffs next season, we could see a coaching change, even though it sounds very unlikely at this current time. With all that being mentioned, with all that being stated, we got a really good offensive line here to protect Dak Prescott. We got two really good running backs. You got Michael Gallup, C.D. Lamb, and Dalton Schultz. Three phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal targets to throw the ball to. You got Jalen Tolbert from last year's draft class. You got Demarcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons. You got a young guy in Byron Ryan coming up in the interior defensive line. You got Drabelle Cox. You got Trayvon Diggs and Emmanuel Forbes. You're spending a first round pick on Malik Hooker and Jaron Kirst. This team all around is very solid. With that being stated, I believe this team next season goes 11 and 6, finishes second in the NFC East, and wins a game in the playoffs again. I don't see this team making too many strides forward in one year under Mike McCarthy's offensive coordinating job here, offensive play calling role, I should say. But I can absolutely see this team taking off in year two under Mike McCarthy calling the plays. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Again, this video takes hours and hours and hours to work on. But again, we would want to hear your feedback to hopefully make our video next year even better. See you guys soon. Peace. We are built better.